Hello everybody, Ben Woodrum here with another Falconer video. Today's video, I'm going to be giving you a little tip uh, when it comes to trapping red tail hawks and trapping in general. Uh, but before we do, if you haven't already, if you could please hit subscribe, it really helps me keep this channel up and going. Uh, now, falconry, trapping has been a part of falconry since its inception thousands of years ago. I live in the United States, and here in the United States, red-tailed hawks are commonly used. Uh, it used to be that an apprentice, a new falconer, legally could only have either an American kestrel or a red-tailed hawk. Uh, now that's loosened up quite a bit. There's other species options, but many people still love to start with a red-tailed hawk. Red-tailed hawks are common. They are fairly easy to trap, fairly easy to train. They are fairly forgiving of your mistakes and shortcomings as a new falconer. And they're a very good hunting bird. They can hunt a wide range of quarry in a wide range of ways. And so they still are very popular, not just with apprentices, but falconers of all ages and experience levels. It's a good choice for a bird. But here's the problem. And I understand migration routes are a little different everywhere you go, uh, but this, there's still truth to this. When you're getting this time of year, which I'm making this video in September, it, you start to have some migration happen. It starts to be a little cooler and more of a legitimate time to, all right, let's go trapping. And especially if you are a new falconer, you're so excited. If you're in the United States, you're like, I've done all this studying and research. I've taken a government mandated test and passed it. I've acquired all the necessary equipment and had a, a state or federal agent come and inspect that equipment. And, and I've gotten a sponsor to sign off and say that they will open over, oversee my progress and help be a teacher and a mentor to me for my first two years. And now finally, I built a trap. I'm going out. I'm going to trap a red-tailed hawk. It's, it's so big. It's so exciting. All of this work and effort finally is about to come to fruition. Usually, a lot of people, uh, October, for me locally, October is kind of the ideal time to trap red-tailed hawks. First weekend of October onward is where it starts to get good. But September... You're starting to get into trapping season, and people are like, yeah, come on, let's let's go trapping, come on, I gotta get my bird. And one of the problems is Swainson's hawks. Swainson's hawks are another budio, a buzzard, a soaring hawk, related to red-tailed hawks. They live in North America, and then in the winter they migrate as far south as Argentina, which is a long migration. September, we're loaded with these. And in your region, you might still have red-tailed hawks as well, but most parts of the country, uh, you might be seeing more of these Swainson's hawks. And then once you get into the cold, the first cold snap in October, they kind of have moved out and you're having red-tailed hawks from up north or higher elevations come down in. So why is this a problem? Swainson's hawks come in a wide range of color morphs. So do red-tailed hawks. If you're getting into falconry, you're probably well aware that red-tailed hawks do not have a red tail, that characteristic red tail, until they are one year old. And we're not catching a bird older than one year. You're catching a first-year bird, which is a passage bird, which will probably have some sort of a brown tail or brown with sort of black stripes on it. And that is how many color morphs of Swainson's hawks look. So if you are an inexperienced new falconer, it is very easy to accidentally trap a Swainson's hawk or put out for a Swainson's hawk, trap it, and then think you got a red tail. We've even had instances almost every year around the country where a sponsor maybe isn't out trapping with their apprentice and the apprentice is like, oh, look, I caught a red tail. Takes a picture, sends it to the sponsor and the sponsor just looks at this tiny, tiny little photo and is like, oh uh, yeah, hey, good job, great. Only to find out a day or two later, oh no, they caught a Swainson's hawk. So why? what's the big deal about this? Two things, first of all, Swainson's hawks, and I'll do another video on them, they're not that good for falconry. There are people who have used them for falconry, and if you want to fly one, go for it. But a red-tailed hawk is a much more powerful, sturdier bird. It's kind of funny that I mentioned that because yesterday I watched an adult female giant red tail getting its butt kicked by a tiny little male swain since I became... It's like... So that kind of seems counter to what I'm trying to say, but... For a falconry bird, especially for a first falconry bird, a red-tailed hawk is a very good bird. A Swainson's hawk is not. Swainson's hawks are pretty big, but they're kind of grasshopper hawkers. They, you know, they will go after rodents and things, but really they love to hunt insects and, and mice. And you could be like, well, so does the kestrel, and you're a big fan of kestrels. Given the choice between the two, I would rather fly a kestrel over a Swainson's hawk. A kestrel is a much more uh, gamey, athletic, capable pursuit 
hunting raptor than a Swainson's hawk. And again, I'll do a video just on Swainson's hawks and their abilities later. But so my point is two things. Number one, if you're trapping, especially this early, be very careful. It is very easy when you're new to this to accidentally trap a Swainson's hawk. Second thing, if you do trap a Swainson's hawk, I thought it was a red tail, and now it's a Swainson's in my hand. Every year we have apprentices across the country who, in that situation, are like, but, but, I can have a bird now. I don't want to wait and may, you know, and still keep trying to get a red tail. I have a bird on hand. I should keep this. Um, again, this is opinion and experience of Ben. This is a doctrine, but trust me, set the Swainson's hawk free and keep trapping until you get yourself a fine red-tailed hawk because you're going to have a much better falconry experience and it's a bird just that lends itself so much better to the sport. It is difficult as a new falconer having trapped your first bird to be like, ah, but it, ah. so those are my two words of caution. Be careful that you're not accidentally trapping a Swainson's instead of a red tail. And secondly, if you do catch a Swainson's hawk and you're going after red tails, do the wise thing, set it free, and keep going until you get a red tail. You'll be a lot happier if you do. Uh, I'm going to have much more in-depth and how-to, very specific techniques on trapping in the coming weeks and months as we ease into the trapping season. But right now, this time of year, uh, I'm just seeing so many Swains and Hawks. It's driving on yesterday, and I'm like, you know what? This is something I ought to pass on. Uh, but more detailed how-to type videos coming up. Uh, if you haven't already, please hit subscribe. And as always, happy hockey.